see success of, of what I have because of what I sacrificed, you know, and that's probably one of the biggest sayings that um, I have is that, you know, my success is in my sacrifice. You know, I think true success is when you, you, you get something and you only appreciate it by looking back and realizing what you had to go through to get it. You know, I think for me, that's success. And that's when I started the question, we well, started to kind of get the answers of my upbringing going, you know, why would God put me there then? You know, I remember as a kid, like an eight, nine year old kid going, you know, obviously I knew about God, but I didn't really follow him. I didn't really believe in him. Why can't, you know, we live in a place where everyone gets the same amount of food? You know, everyone gets the same amount of, you know, quality of life. This doesn't make, it, doesn't make any sense. And I remember, you know, kind of, you know, hating God when I was a kid because <clears throat> the way I grew up and then what until I found God in 09 and that things were obviously uh, part of my character that I started to realise going well I wouldn't have actually been this per type of person if I hadn't went through that you know what I mean I wouldn't have been as strong and as confident as as mentally um, powerful if I hadn't have been through the struggle as a kid you know, and that's when I started to hit me going wow you know I think you know even when you know, people would find out where we're from or where we grew up, you know, they'd always be a bit cautious or, you know, kind of look down on us where, you know, mum always, you know, held her head high and was just like, you know, it don't matter, you know what I mean? Like, we're still, you know, we're still good people, you know, we still got, you know, good morals and, and, and whatnot and mum had a great work, work ethic, you know, something that really rubbed off on me and that's all that really mattered, you know? So, no matter where, whether you got money or you don't got money, you know what I mean? It's all about, you know, work ethic and, and Jared Hain has been fantastic. Flat for Hain into a hole. Wonder Bates. Hain is the Jared. On Jared and Paul there from Rob Hain. Now he's out. Go big now to Wayne Glover. Oh, Jared Hain has scored. It's the Hain plane. Is it not? It's bigger than a jumbo and faster than a concourse. You always have to make decisions. You can't live your life without making decisions. Some people, they, well, they're double minded, they're indecisive. And the Bible talks about the double-minded person says they're unstable in all their ways. So indecisiveness is instability. Other people, all they want is stability, so they keep things safe, but they only make safe decisions. And of course, other people... Um, you know, there weren't, there weren't too many, uh, I guess, too many avenues other than sport for me to get out. You know, and that's why I become so good at it because it was my oxygen. You know, this sport, sport to me wasn't just a thing that you know your parents put you in or thing that you know my mum just wanted to get me out of the house for a couple of hours. You know, we had struggles of mum trying to get me in the house. You know, mum's always like street lights. When the street lights come on, you need to be inside, and we're always arguing, going, I want to be outside. You know, I want to keep running around. I want to, you know, keep, you know, having fun. To me, it was fun. But then when I look back at it, that's where you kind of get that work ethic of always wanting to you know, better yourself, always wanting to improve, always wanting to try something different, try something new, because I just had that mentality of, of, of never being satisfied, you know, and I guess when you become a bit older, you start to to realise how, how, how important consistency is. When I played football, it's like you can, you can say everything, like, like you said, you know, people would say, no, he's not that good. All right, well then I'll go show you. You know, he, he can't do that. And, and all right, and I think, Growing up, that was a real motivator for me, you know, and then probably wasn't until I found God that I was just like, I can't let that motivate me because that's controlling me. You know, I don't want something, I don't want, you know, neg if negativity is motivating you, that means it's controlling you, you know, so I kind of flipped it and just went, went from a positive point of view going, I just want to be the best, best me I can be, you know, and that's something that really changed my mentality from, from, you know, using the, the old saying, you know, haters are my motivators, you know. Well, if haters are your motivators, that, that's, that's really basically saying that haters controlling your life. Yeah, like, uh, like most terrific athletes, he's really in tune with his body and he doesn't rely on his natural talents. He's always working to improve his body's firing, to improve his strength, and he's one of these people who can see the wood through the trees. For him, he knows that where he needs to be first place is on the field, uh, you know, with his running and, and, and his track work. And so all of what we do uh, is geared towards that. We need to make him fast, balanced, injury free, and uh, you know, our focus is, is all about that. Who you see in the media is not who he actually is. Like, he, he lets you see that. 
but the real side he won't let you see. You know what I mean? And people don't see that side. You know, people will always see, oh, this athlete has this foundation, this athlete has that, this athlete. No one will see Jared rocking up to a random house in Lamia, him knocking on the front door and going, I don't know the pain that you're going through, but if this can help in some way, I hope it does. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the that's that's Jared in a nutshell. So everything you see on Facebook and Instagram, like he's letting you see that. Cause there's stuff that you're not seeing like that that people will never know. No one will ever know. I had friends that would always say, oh man, if, if you were you know, to go to the NFL, you'd be a running back. And I started to inquire about it, going, well, can I go? Can I push myself to that, that place? Can I take myself out of this and go to there? And I didn't really look at it, you know, I didn't look at myself as, as hey, I'm, I'm this professional athlete with a, a massive following that's earning really good money. Stay here and don't go because you know, money is what life's about. And that wasn't my mentality. My, my mentality was starting to form to, to a point of, of how do I be a better person? How do I push myself? How do I, how do I be that kid that was from Campbelltown that seen something and, and, and was like, damn, that's a good challenge, man. Let me, let, let's do it, you know, kind of thing. And that's what I did. You know, I, I stopped everything that I was doing and I said, listen, I want to, my, like my mentality was I want to go back to that kid from Kelmontown that, that chased, you know, that was chasing something that was different or that was um, at the time interesting to him, you know. And in 2014, at the time, was the NFL was so interesting that I couldn't stop thinking about it. You know, I, I'd, I'd go to sleep thinking about it. You know, round one, 2014, round one, I was thinking about the NFL, game day. And that's when I kind of knew, you know, I was like, this is not right. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm, I'm letting myself down by not attempting it, you know? And I, I put everything out of the equation. I put money, I put fame, I put, I guess, uh, comfortability, I, I put it all away. I said, no, I don't want that. You know, what I, what I want is a journey. You know, what I want is, uh, you know, an adventure, you know? And everyone thought I was crazy. You know, it's like, you can't go on adventures when you're 20, 26 years old and a superstar, that's not, you know, that's not what life's about. And I was like, no, no, you, like, you all got it wrong. I know what life's about. You all got it wrong. Life has to continue to be an adventure unless you just become stable, mate. But I tell you one thing, unless you knock on the door, you will never know if it's going to open. You know, and that's as simple as that. You know, there's, there's uh, opportunities in life that people miss because of the fear that the door might be locked, the door might be closed. You know, and I, it took me about two or three years to, 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 you know, build up the courage and say, listen, go and open it, man.